morning, everyone. Thank you, Philomena, and uh, thank you, David, for testing out the uh, technology and making it easier for the rest of us. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about our uh, journey to preparing and submitting um, the successful URDF application that we had. And, and it should benchmark the new sort of role that local authorities, a growing role that local authorities have in collaborating around significant projects. Um, first of all, okay. um, first of all, um, just in the context of, for Galway City, in the NPF, uh, we've been challenged with increasing the population by 50% over the next 20 years in the national planning framework. Uh, so what we did when, when, when that was announced is break it down in, in what does that mean for a city of Galway, which currently has about 80,000 uh, citizens. Um, that means we have to uh, create 16,500 new residential units. Uh, and we're able to start benchmarking with this data where we are, are in that journey. And we've, we've a thousand underway, uh, and we've 4,000 progressing to, to planning progress. So, so we are already starting to track, are we going to uh, uh, meet this challenging target that's set for us? Um, it will also, based on the per labor participation rate of our city at the moment, it will, also, all, it will require us to create an additional 18,500 new jobs. Um, to sustain that population that we're going to create. Uh, so that's no uh, small challenge in itself. Uh, and that also um, means we also have to create additional jobs to that to replace jobs that will uh, uh, go out of fashion in the next few years. So there's, there's even more than that 18,000 have to be created in the city. Um, we're a, a knowledge city. Uh, the university, uh, as you'll see from our, our, our URDF application, is a significant uh, uh, element of our economy in the city. Uh, and we have to create another 7,000 uh, third level uh, places within the city over that, that, that 20 year time frame. Um, we are a tourist town as well, uh, and we benchmarked about growing tourism uh, with that, that population growth and, and that city's growth. And then we need to accommodate an additional 2.7 million visitors per annum in, in the city at the end of that journey. Uh, and that, that needs more bedrooms uh, and more attra attractions uh, for, for tourists to come. Um, and then we've also looked at we'll need commercial office space of 150,000 square meters in that time frame. Um, and that will need to be uh, created in the city centre because the demand now in, in, in for new uh, employment opportunities is back into the core of cities. Uh, and that's the kind of uh, employment we're creating in, in the city, uh, is that sort of office-based, uh, high-value, high-tech uh, jobs who want to be in the city core. And they want to be the, uh, uh, at, at the centre of a vibrant city that is attractive. And, and that's all the context that's been behind our URDF proposal. Um, and also for the city, it's a priority that we achieve this in, in line with UN Sustainable Development Goals, and it's that we sustain the uh, high quality environment that we have around our city. Uh, our city is surrounded by uh, special areas of, of designation, um, and uh, that, that it's, uh, can be seen as constraint, but it can also be seen as an attraction, and, and that's why people want to live in our city, so we have to maintain that. Um, a second project we had done prior to ever the URDF called for funding was to look at what is planned for the city uh, within the National Development Plan. Uh, and it, in its previous iteration, we were able to identify all the capital projects that are in the pipeline in the next uh, 10 years uh, across the city. Uh, and, and we also then collated the uh, development plans uh, of private developers uh, and other uh, capital projects in the city. Uh, and we pulled that together to a robust, and you're not going to be able to read this, I, well, maybe you can, that's a big screen. Um, but what we've tried to do is break down the individual projects that are in the pipeline, under construction, uh, in the medium term range, to look at how the city is, is developing. Uh, and through that exercise, we are able to identify 4.01 billion pro projects that have capital commitments to, to the city in the, in the next 10 years. Um, and that's across a range of programs of private investment, which takes about uh, a third of it, and then capital investment. Um, uh, and there, this is a very conservative estimate because uh, it has benchmarked against funding that is already allocated to projects. Um, so we're able to indicate and, and put a narrative out there that this city is going to grow, this is the infrastructure that's going to be put in place to make it grow, uh, and, and we are coordinating, as a local authority, this investment to get the best value out of it and to get the best impact for our city so that it grows uh, effectively. So as part of the URDF proposals, we had the, 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 the emphasis of URDF was 
collaboration uh, and, and get collaborative projects. And, and more and more, the, the scale of projects that local authorities are going to undertake, um, they need to do it in collaboration uh, for, to secure resources, to secure uh, skill sets, uh, and to secure implementation. So the partners in our, that we called together uh, were the college as a major uh, uh, investor in the city, uh, the GMIT as the, the new uh, uh, alliance uh, uh, college, uh, a new university on the west coast, um, Bus Air and Irish Rail and the NTA as the transport network uh, that will uh, change the modes of transport that we use in our city to make it more sustainable so that when we have this growth of 40,000 new people that it's in a sustainable manner. Um, we simply cannot uh, continue uh, developing the city on a car based, uh, road based network. So what are the key things uh, when, when, when we're doing collaboration? Uh, it's, it's important that there's strong relationships in place between the agencies, that, that we know each other and we trust each other. We're going in, getting involved in some significant investment between one another, uh, and we need those strong relationships. Uh, and they need to be in place in advance of calls. Uh, these need to be built over time. These need to be built um, from relationships between chief executives at those two organisations. And uh, our own chief executive has put a lot of time uh, into developing those relationships with the chief executives of, of and presidents of senior organisations, uh, both nationally uh, and locally, to make sure that we are ready for the calls uh, and we're ready to get... Uh, and we have good relationships with these organisations when, uh, when, when calls for funding come, come down, downstream. Um, you need resources to, to support engagement, the networks and opportunities. We have structures like LCDCs uh, and, and CDBs beforehand, but also we need uh, tourism task forces, uh, we need uh, planning uh, committees uh, between the different stakeholders in cities and, and counties, so that they're resourced over the long term, so that we're developing projects through the pipeline that enables us to be ready for when calls come. Because the tight time frame in turning and submitting a call is so tight, you can never get a, a, an, app, an application ready and, and developed enough, uh, usually in the time frame you have. You have to have groundwork done, you have to have planning applications done, you have to have business cases built. Um, these uh, these um, uh, collaborations have to be both formal and informal, and a lot of the work gets done in the informal integration and networking that goes on at city level and county level. And there has to be ongoing communication, and, and that's honest communication, and we have to be able to prioritise with our stakeholders as to what are the key projects for the city, which need to come first, which are the facilitators and enablers of other projects, uh, and, and we have those open, honest conversations with one another as partners to say, yes, we will get to your project, but there are key ones we need to put in place first that in open up other projects. Uh, and that was key in, in our URDF selection process, is that the projects that emerged and were prioritised by us uh, and our partners were ones that were enabling projects. They opened the door to those other four billion projects advancing quicker or advancing in a more uh, attractive manner uh, or they're finished better. Uh, and that's a key, and that can only happen through uh, uh, op uh, uh, open and ongoing communication. You also need a good supporting policy framework, because you need that for the, for the application. And that, that's like putting policy works like the Galway Transportation Study that we have in place. Um, you need your, your planning city development plan to be there. You need your uh, urban uh, enhancement plans all to be in place. Uh, in advance of, of funding application calls. Uh, if you're trying to get those in place when a call is open, you've missed, you've missed the races. Uh, the stages in the process that, that we followed was, first of all, is uh, an open meeting with all uh, part, potential partners in the city, and that was a broader one, in, 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 including other stakeholders uh, who had projects that they wanted included on URDF. And that was a, a, a sharing knowledge of the, the call, what was involved in it, uh, what we were proposing as priorities uh, and what we were uh, uh, advising uh, our partners when they were putting forward their, their proposals, what we were going to prioritise first. Um, 
After that, it was ongoing dialogue, engagement at senior levels in the between the stakeholders. And that was refining the projects that came in from, from the partners. Uh, so that they could tell, that we could tell them how they fitted in with the priorities of the city development plan, uh, of our, our urban enhancement programs, of our Galway transportation study strategy, uh, and that was so that they could refine their projects uh, from what they initially uh, proposed to one that fed, fed into our narrative. Um, the policy framework was in place, and we asked each of the partners to indicate how their projects were going to meet the demands of the, of the policy framework that we had. Um, there was some uh, uh, tough meetings held where we were finding proposals because when everybody puts forward a, a proposal, it's, it's their baby, it's their child, and, and they think it's fantastic. And, and when you have to go and, and, and criticise somebody's children, you really uh, test your relationship with them. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a process that needs trust, and needs understanding from all parties as to why the criticism is coming. It was to try and improve the quality of the project we were proposing. Uh, the URDF is a competitive fund. Uh, we were charged with, uh, with pitching that to an independent committee, uh, and we needed the strongest possible bid. Uh, and in that context, we advised the partners from the start, we would be critical, we would be challenging, and, and we would be testing their projects to see the robustness, because we expected that in, in, in the assessment process ourselves. Um, and in, in, in all honesty, we got that uh, uh, open dialogue with the partners. Uh, and and so the good sign is that through the whole process, even the partners who were unsuccessful are still in uh, communication with us, still in collaboration with us, still looking to see how we can further develop their projects, which weren't successful. Uh, and that's part of the relationship that we, we're building all the time in the city. Um, and then the key thing after that was, uh, because if you look at the scale of our projects, which I'll, I'll get to now, is how could we give them into a single narrative um, that bound them together, that made sense to the, uh, an independent assessor, uh, and, and made it a, co a, a, a cohesive, compelling proposal. Uh, and in this sort of scenario, we, we went and built on our success to date. Uh, we said that this, the city of Galway before has doubled in size. It, it had the reputation of the fastest growing city in Europe at one point in, in the 90s and, and, and noughties. Uh, and we said, we are not uh, at all phased by the challenge of, uh, of growing by 50% again. It's something we've done, and we'll do it again, and we did it well the le next, last time, and we want to do it even better. So the projects that, that we uh, got funding for uh, were across three main areas. One was transport connectivity, uh, and that the main part, one of the elements of that was working with Aaron Rod Aaron, developing the train station, main train station in Galway City to increase the number of platforms to make sure that uh, the commuter population that comes to the city core can, can get in and out faster and more regularly to the city. Um, built on that, then we, we need to uh, enable those individuals to use a cycle network to get around to their places of work. Uh, we need to open up um, uh, a land bank at the edge of the city, and then we need, uh, we need to link the college more with a with uh, uh, unique uh, upcycling project that we have, uh, reusing the old Clifton Railway Bridge, uh, which is no longer there, to put in a new pedestrian and cycle bridge, which links the university campus back to an, a land bank that we are about to start developing with the LDA. Under this, we, we got 40.3 million uh, towards project funding of, of 73 million in total. Uh, and the partners, uh, Aaron Road Aaron, ourselves, uh, NTA, are coming in with the other uh, 33 million to, to drive that project. A key uh, factor uh, that we want, wanted funding is with regard to our public realm. Um, if the growth of the city, which is going to be rapid, and that four billion gets invested in, it could become a very concrete orientated city very quickly. And the finish by, through our public realm is, realm is critical to uh, make sure that we replicate what is unique and uh, attractive about the core of Galway city into this new development. So it, it's trying to mirror in, in a new way what is beautiful about the Galway city, it, it, its heritage, uh, its archaeological um, uh, attractiveness, uh, and, and, and it's a medieval city. So how do we make sure that the finish to the new city 
uh, or the new parts of the city uh, it, it replicates that. And that's true investment in the public realm. Uh, and, and we have a public realm strategy in place, and it's about getting funding towards that. Uh, and the total cost of that will be 17.28 million, uh, of which we got 8.6 million uh, awarded on the URDF. And the key thing there is that it'll be the finish that, that makes the city even more attractive. And as I said, another key project is the role of the university in the city. We, need to, we already have about 25,000 students, uh, third level students in the city. Uh, it's a knowledge city, that's a huge resource for attractive multinationals, for people who want to move to the city. Uh, it also brings a, a youth population into the city constantly that find an attractive place to live and then want to live there. Um, so it, it ensures the growth of the city uh, into the future. Um, and under that, the college has a, a proposal uh, to embed the, city, the, the university campus more into the city, uh, and, and building, on, building a, a fourth generation college, uh, of, which will cost in the region of 384 million when it's finally developed. And the first round of that planning process is, is concluded in URDF, and 4.3 million was awarded to that. And just to give you some visuals that this was critical, uh, and we used a lot of drone footage in our presentation to show how we were doing this all in the core of the city, how we were transforming the core of the city. So I don't know if, any, if you're familiar with Galway, but there's uh, the, the cathedral at the city centre, uh, the NUYG campus at the, uh, in the background there. It will come and flip to the other side of, of that cathedral to those buildings at the bottom of the screen and that's the new Nuns Island campus of where the, the, the old buildings that the college all own are going to be transformed into uh, uh, postdoctorate facilities, innovation centres, cultural facilities uh, and, and revitalise this part of the city. Um, the Clifton Railway Bridge is in the background there and that will link the, uh, the, the, the existing campus to the Dyke Road master plan site where we are just about to, to embark in a in development role with the LDA, uh, developing more residential uh, uh, and, and student accommodation and hotel accommodation and office accommodation. Um, so we're stitching the campus even more into the city of the centre. Cairns Station there below is the main uh, uh, in, uh, arrival point to the city centre um, uh, and it, at the moment is operating on two platforms and, and is constrained about how much uh, passengers it, it, it can take. So that there is planning in place to develop that uh, uh, into five platform station um, and also in the sort of areas around it there you see in the lower picture uh, there's already uh, planning uh, submissions to develop uh, residential, uh, commercial uh, and office space in around that, that facility and that becomes a, a business hub and commercial hub of the city centre as well. Again, the public realm strategy we have, we have already uh, adopted by our councillors and which sets the, the sort of palette of how we're going to develop the city, the materials we're going to use, the finishes we're going to use, and we've identified key spaces through the city that we have to uh, invest money in, uh, and that's, that's a key element as well. All these projects are in that snapshot uh, of, 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 of the city centre, and, and that shows how that, that single message of how we're transforming our core between the Nuns Islands, the, the railway bridge, the cycle lanes, um, our own regeneration uh, uh, sites. And what you'll see there is what we did for, for, for our submission was, in the green is, is, is the projects we asked the URDF if they'd like to come on board with, and the white ones are the ones we're driving anyway. Um, so they can be part of our story or not, and that's their choice. Um, gladly, in the end, they chose they want to be part of our story. Uh, and we went strong on that, that this will happen, you can come on board. Key thing as well, then, is to stitch it back to the sustainable development goals. And, and what we did is we did a proofing of all the projects when they came in, uh, and we identified what sustainable goals they were uh, uh, targeting and what they would be addressing um, so that we could give concrete examples of how the project was addressing the different sustainable goals, uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, that's just a summary of the projects. Uh, in total, uh, there's uh, 96 million uh, secured under, under the scheme, uh, our, our projects being funded on the scheme, 53 million from uh, URDF, and 43 million that are, is committed matching funding on board already, um, and that's in place. Uh, so in, in summary, 
why, why we were successful in collaboration is that we had policy frameworks uh, that people can, can see where we're going. Um, all, the other partners had their strategic plans as well, so we can, we can show how the their strategic plans uh, dovetail with our own policy frameworks. Informal and informal ongoing dialogue on joint projects well in advance of any funding calls. Uh, open dialogue is critical. Um, it's clear that we had an overall agreed vision for the city, uh, the growth of the city, uh, and, and that that four billion was a, a story that we could tell everybody quickly, this is happening, we just want to target it well and we want to direct it well. Um, we had an understanding amongst the partners of each other's constraints, uh, and we all have constraints, we're all tied by different policy uh, and legal constraints and financial constraints, and it's to have them out in the open. Um, the partners are adaptable, uh, and we adapted all our projects uh, over the lifetime of preparing the application and in advance of preparing the application, so that people uh, uh, come to the centre uh, and come to agreement. And a key thing as well is that the uh, uh, capital funding schemes, and, and in, in my lifetime of 20 odd years in local government, I've never seen as much capital uh, funding available, uh, and that means we can plan well. Uh, we can plan intelligently, because we know we'll get the investment down the line, uh, and, and we can attract further investment through private sector uh, and international finances when that capital uh, money is, is on the table already. So thank you very much, and I'll take questions again.